Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is... Give me a moment, Chooms. What's that? I can't hear you. Can you come a little bit closer and explain that? Right? Are you sure? Oh, wow. Well, that's fantastic news. Thank you. So... I was just about to do a video about leg training promoting hair growth, but it looks like we're going to need to change course here, Chooms, because Dr. Morton Solis himself, who is one of the top researchers here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Scientific Research, he just gave me some breaking news. It looks like we have some results that were just released on the hair loss treatment known as TDM105795. Now, Dr. Solis is from the Tau Ceti star system, which is 11.9 light years away from Earth, so as you might imagine, English is obviously not his first language, so I'll do my best to explain his findings. So, here it is. It is a press release that's telling us not only that the Phase 2 clinical trial of TDM105795 is complete, but more importantly, that we actually have some positive results for a change. This is a much-needed break after the very disappointing news we got from pyrolutamide a couple of months ago. Now, with all the different new drugs being investigated for hair loss, maybe you've forgotten about TDM105795. Okay, let's just call it TDM from now on. I actually did a video on the drug back in June of last year, and I'll link that video below. But in case you've forgotten about it, TDM is being developed by a Chinese company that is not Kintor. Instead, it is a company called Technoderma Medicines. What is especially interesting about TDM is that it has a completely unique mechanism of action. It isn't a 5-AR inhibitor or an androgen receptor blocker. It is more like a general growth stimulant comparable to something like minoxidil, but its mechanism of action is not like that of any other growth stimulant on the market today, meaning it could potentially be stacked with other growth stimulants like minoxidil and stamoxidine. The drug is what's called a thyromimetic. That literally means the drug acts like the thyroid hormone that we all have in our bodies and which is critical for multiple vital functions. And one of those vital functions is, you guessed it, hair growth. Even though we only started hearing about this drug recently, this type of drug was tested in mice and monkeys way back in the year 2010, which is the same year Mass Effect 2 came out, and the results were published in this article here. In the article, the researchers described something they called Compound 5. Compound 5 stimulates the thyroid receptor, and when it's given topically, it causes hair growth in mice and monkeys, while at the same time it was found to be rapidly metabolized so it doesn't stay in the bloodstream, which meant only very low levels were seen in the blood after topical application. Nevertheless, it is absorbed into the skin well, so it's able to reach the hair follicles. The press release adds some more interesting details on the mechanism of the drug. In animal models, it activates dormant hair follicle stem cells and induces the antigen growth phase. Testing was done in rats as well as in absolutely adorable mini pigs. Don't worry, the mini pigs and other animals were not harmed in this study. They actually tolerated the drug very well. These animal studies as well as the phase 1 human trials all showed a very good safety profile for TDM. The drug has a short half-life and has poor systemic absorption, ensuring it works locally on the scalp where it is applied. Back when I did my first video on TDM, it was after the Technoderma medicines company had released the results of the phase one study, which like I said, showed that the drug was well tolerated and had a good safety profile. However, the details were pretty sketchy. So with this phase two results announcement, we actually have more solid information to work with. So let's get back to the press release. The phase two study was a randomized placebo control study of men with androgenic alopecia. It lasted four months. 71 subjects were enrolled and the subjects either got a very low concentration of TDM at just 0.0025% or a higher concentration of 0.02% applied topically every day. So what were the results? First of all, there were no safety issues whatsoever, and blood tests showed either extremely low or no systemic absorption at all. But let's look at hair counts here. In each group, the investigators used a phototrichogram to count non-vellus hairs in a one square centimeter target area. With low-dose TDM, hair counts increased by 20.3 hairs per square centimeter. With high-dose TDM, though, the hair counts increased by 24.3 hairs per square centimeter. This sounds pretty impressive to me, especially when we compare these these results to another drug that is getting a lot more hype, HMI-115. I made a video recently after the phase 1 trial results were released for HMI-115, and I'll link that video below, but to sum up the HMI-115 study, the results of only 12 men were reported, and the increase of non vellus hairs was only 14 hairs per square centimeter. However, that study had no control group, but fortunately, this new TDM study did have a control group. So how did the control group do in the TDM study? Well, the 
control group in the TDM study had an increase of, guess what, 14 hairs per square centimeter, the exact same as the increase seen for the HMI-115 study. And to think some of you guys were mad at me for saying that HMI-115 wouldn't live up to the hype. It turns out I was correct. This just goes to show how damn important it is to have a control group to begin with. Hair loss is not a steady process, and there are periods of hair growth and hair shedding even in men with androgenic alopecia. So the control group in a short-term study of men with androgenic alopecia doesn't always show a loss of hair during that period. You also have to account for the placebo effect, where just by being in a study where people think they are getting a powerful new drug, they will actually get a response to the drug. This explains why you see people claim that they get results from bullshit treatments like scalp massages, onion juice, and broccoli. The placebo effect is definitely a medical mystery, but it is a real one. I'll link an article below that reviews the placebo effect. It documents that the placebo effect is real, and that it may be related to changes in neurotransmitters, hormones, and immune regulators. It's certainly possible that changes in hormone levels triggered by the placebo effect could affect hair growth. So, it's kind of ironic that the HMI-115 result of an increase of 14 hairs per square centimeter is exactly the same as the result of a placebo treatment in the TDM study. What that means is we really can't assess the HMI-115 results at all, because there is nothing to compare it to. The result could have just been the same as what a placebo treatment would have done. It also means we can have confidence that the TDM Phase 2 trial results are real and that the drug actually does improve hair growth since we actually have seen how it compares to a placebo treatment. So presumably, based on the success of this research, Technoderma Medicines will be moving on to Phase 3 studies of TDM in the near future. And I think that, unlike HMI-115, this drug will be a useful and practical additional weapon in our battle against the slaphead curse. First of all, it is extremely gratifying that TDM is going to be another general growth stimulant option for hair loss sufferers. Of course, the mainline therapy to any hair loss stack should always be a 5-air inhibiting drug since that stops DHT, which is the root cause of androgenic alopecia. But not everybody, including myself, had the hindsight to start finasteride before losing ground, so having another growth stimulant option to help maximize our chances of regrowth is definitely a welcome addition to any hair loss stack. Like minoxidil, TDM regrows hair, so like minoxidil, it would stack very well with finasteride. Also, since it works completely differently from minoxidil, it could even be stacked with minoxidil, allowing hair loss users to use multiple powerful growth stimulants, which would have a very good chance of regrowing a substantial amount of lost hair when using a 5-air inhibiting drug like finasteride. It's also a good option as a growth stimulant alternative to people who can't use minoxidil because they are poor responders, they're allergic to it, or they're sensitive to the side effects of minoxidil. Secondly, this is going to be a simple topical solution that we apply just like any other topical. It's not a monoclonal antibody like HMI-115 that requires a periodic injection into the abdomen. Since HMI-115 is injected into the abdomen, it has to go systemic in order to work. Since it is a prolactin receptor antibody, its action in the body is similar to what would happen if you had a prolactin deficiency. Unfortunately, not much is known about the results of a prolactin deficiency because isolated prolactin deficiency is an extreme rare condition. There are only a few reports in the medical literature, so we don't really know all that much about it. Prolactin is obviously important to women of childbearing age because it helps develop the mammary glands and it stimulates milk production. However, it contributes to hundreds of other physiologic functions as well. For a long time, it was believed that prolactin wasn't important in men, but new data shows this probably isn't true. For example, low prolactin levels have been associated with erectile dysfunction of all things. In many cases, it's not clear whether associations between low prolactin levels and medical problems is just a correlation or causation, but the point is, we know very little about prolactin deficiency in both men and women. But there's yet another problem with reducing prolactin levels, specifically in women. In men, prolactin induces the catagen phase of the hair cycle, resulting in the end of the antigen growth phase, so prolactin inhibits hair growth. However, in women, prolactin actually does the opposite. It triggers the antigen growth phase. We actually don't even know the effect of HMI-115 in the women in the phase 1 study because the results were only reported in the men and the women were excluded from the results even though there were women in the study. This makes me think that the women in the study either had poor results or they got side effects or maybe both of those things happened to them, but in the case of TDM, there should be no problem with women using it. 
Thirdly, TDM is going to be much, much cheaper than HMI-115. Judging by the cost of other monoclonal antibodies, HMI-115 could easily cost thousands of dollars per month, especially since HMI-115 is going to be a treatment designed for a cosmetic condition, so it is very unlikely it will be covered by insurance. Lastly, even though HMI-115 may end up having some minor hair growth stimulating effects, it looks like TDM-105795 works much better and it actually has a good chance of hitting the market due to its safety and efficacy. HMI-115, if it ever hits the market at all, is a treatment that only the super rich will be able to afford and even rich people are not going to spend a ton of money on a treatment that so far hasn't been shown to work better than even placebo treatments. In fact, I think there is a very good chance that HMI-115 will never hit the market at all. It's just simply too expensive, too ineffective, and too impractical. But TDM-105795, on the other hand, is a completely different story. All the research done on it so far has been of very high quality, and everything we know about the drug shows that it is safe, effective, and practical, which is exactly the type of new treatment the hair loss community needs. So, I'll be keeping a close eye on this one, Shooms. I'll be back with more new treatments in the pipeline soon, and I'll talk about that all in depth just like I did here. So thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers. God bless.